It's like Kirk Franklin said, even tried to tell the pastor, but he couldn't see. Years of low self-esteem and insecurities. The church taught me how to shout and how to speak in tongues. The preacher teach me how to live, now when the tongue is done. Because though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. Let's go. Right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Offbeat Podcast. And uh, today, man, we got something a little bit different. And guess who is back on the show as a guest today? What's up, Aaron? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, good, good, good. <laughs> Pastor Aaron is in the house. Good right? to be back. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good to be back. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what do you think about the new setup, bro? Man, it's so good. <laughs> I, it's like a, a 2.0, man. It's so good. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. So, and uh, I, I've never, you know, I've always, uh, you know, little by little, man, like, you know, I've always had the vision of like, you know, kind of what it wanted to look like and everything. So it's coming along little by little. Yeah, it's, it feels great. It feels cozy. I love it. And it's just, it's so different from when we first started off. It was just yeah. an idea. You yeah. Know? And then now it's just becoming like this emotion and it's yeah. just coming together and I love it. It feels great. Yeah. Good job, man. No, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. And, I, and I'm so grateful, bro. I'm so grateful for, I always say, I'm so grateful for you and Brian. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, dude, of course. I know that you guys, you know, um, you know, we're busy. Life, yeah. life happens. You know, you got the church. You got uh, a lot on your plate. Um, Brian, shout out to Brian Padilla. Padilla. I know you're gonna watch this because I'm gonna send it to you, bro. <laughs> but shout out, man. I know that he just had a congrats on his baby. He just baby, had, baby. He just that's had cool. a baby girl. A baby girl. Yeah, she's oh, beautiful. So cool. Yeah, she's beautiful, beautiful man. So. And I know life has him busy and everything, but I'm so grateful, man, because you guys were the catalyst to really impulse, man, That's to cool. really like, let's make this happen, mm -hmm. you know, because I was I was against the fence, man, for months. Yeah, I was against the fence for months, man. Like, should I start? Should I not start? <laughs> what are people going to think? What are people going to say, man? And honestly, man, I'm so grateful that, you know, I, I really believe everything happens for a reason. And God really put you guys in my life to be that catalyst, man, to say, just do it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I think um, going forward with you, it was always something that I love doing. I love conversing with people. And I think the hardest part is that um, in taking a step like this or any decision that you saw in your heart yeah. is the risk. Right. You know, and sometimes you're like, you got to just calculate it and say, all right, there's a possibility I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, they're going to say something that I don't know the terminologies. I don't know this or yeah. what whatnot, you know, but that's part of the learning curve. And you just got to do it. And sometimes that's what it's really about. Just yeah. step out and do it. And you and you did it, you know. Yeah. And so I really wanted to be a part of this and, and to keep going with you. But there was, came a time where like my wife and I had to sit down and we're like, you know what? You're gonna have a busy year. Twenty three is gonna be really busy for yeah. you, and I have to really think about you, your time, my time, my kids' time, yeah. and like the church is. Uh, I'm so happy where we're at right now with our church, um, and so I kind of just felt like it was only the right thing to do right. to to step away for for a while, um, because this a lot of people don't know, but a podcast is not just talking. Right. There's a, there goes a lot into podcasting. There goes a lot into deep conversations. And, yeah. and so I had to really pick the responsibilities yeah. and really pray about it. And and I, I felt like it was supposed to be this way. So, so to be back here, yeah. it's pretty cool. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. No, no. Today's awesome, man. And, 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 it, and today what we're going to talk about, we're just going to conversate about your message from Sunday, bro. Oh, okay. Your message from Sunday, bro. I really, man, it really, it, it, well, number one, it really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. It really spoke to me in the transition that I'm in right now. Cause may, maybe people don't know, maybe people don't care. I don't know who cares, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, my wife and I, my family, my entire family is actually, we're in the middle of a transition. Okay. You know, we're in a transition season. And so we're, we actually transitioned to Christian Fellowship. Yeah. What's CF. that? Huh? What's that? Christian <laughs> right Fellowship San Bernardino. Yeah, man. So we're right there with you guys now, man. And it's, uh, it, you know, it's, 
I'm so I'm I'm at I'm at a peace, bro. I'm awesome. I'm at such a peace, you know. Um, there's such a peace, man. Uh, after making this transition, and um, we know it's not easy. We know that there's a lot of personal things that you know we are you know uh, going through. You know, I mean, emotionally, yeah. mentally, and things like that. You know, it's it's different. You know, like um, you know, because I pretty much my wife pretty much grew up in the in the ministry we yeah. were in, you know, great ministry, you know, even myself, I could say I grew up in that ministry because I went in when I was, you know, 18 years old. I was a yeah, kid. I was a kid. A, yeah, that's and a minute. I was a kid, man. And, you know, that's 18, 19 years of yeah. my life, you know, and, um, you know, but we really prayed it out. We, um, we really felt that it was time. Yeah. It was time to make that transition. And we try to do it as, as smooth, as positive as possible. But there's always that, emotional pushback oh, of there's always that mental you, pushback you grew up with that you know yeah. your wife grew up but that's her family and yeah. you grew up but that's your family and then like god just puts something on your heart yeah. and it's you know once again it's taking that step out yeah. you know and you're all of our emotions everywhere our, our thoughts everything yeah. your kids are a part of that you know so but I'm glad you're with us. It's been yeah. such a, it's always so good to see you guys in our, in our church services. And, you know, it's just been a blessing, you know, yeah. and, and we know that you're there for a reason and I'm excited for what the Lord is doing already. I feel like we're a part of what you're doing and yeah. what your wife is doing. And it's just been an amazing journey yeah. so far. So, yeah. Um, so what do you want to talk about that Sunday? So this Sunday, man, I have heard so many David and Goliath stories, yeah. bro. You know, I have heard so many. I've preached David and Goliath. I'm sure you've preached countless <laughs> David yeah. and Goliath stories. I mean, I think we've gone through so many different mm. angles in that story. And one of the things that I love so much about what you said, which is 100% true, is that you can read a scripture, a verse, a passage over and over and over and over yeah. and over again. And each time, you know, depending on the season that you're in or even just the moment that you're in, that passage, you know, is going to speak to you in, in a different way. Yeah. You know, certain context is just going to jump out for you, you know, to maybe help minister to you in that moment or even for others, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I and and it's I was like, that's when you spoke that message, man, I was like, yo, I never heard David and Goliath. <laughs> in that light. Okay, can I okay, before I tell you, <laughs> um, I'm this past Sunday I was supposed to preach another sermon. Okay. Um I was going to preach I'm I'm getting ready to preach on Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. And so it's the fire and brimstone. So, yeah. You know? <laughs> and I want I'm I'm a type of person that like to speak messages that have stigmas on it. So um, everybody's like, oh, man, God destroyed that city. But then when I was preparing for it, it was like during the middle week and I was I like to rehearse and sort out my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I go in this room where I preach and I start preaching and I'm already going in. And then out of nowhere, this I automatically did this in the middle of my rehearsing. And I go, incoming, in the empire. David and Goliath. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I? And then I just have this whole different sermon. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, do I just, yeah. I feel conflicted. And so I just kind of just sat down and prayed. I yeah. said, God, are you telling me to like, do I feel like I need to preach? I'm like, David and Goliath is too easy. Like, I'm like, that feels yeah. like a, I'm like, and with all respect and reverence, yeah. but that feels like a lazy sermon. You know, yeah. I hate to say that. I'm like, I'm not trying to be like, oh yeah, but like, it just, Mm. Yeah, and I don't know, and there, and then also it's kind of hard to break that that chapter because it's a long. There's so much so detail much in, in that there. Story. I'm like, where do I pick out? And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. And so I could kept praying, but the more like as the hour went by, I just knew where I was going. I'm like, all right, this I know I'm gonna have to hold off on the Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm like, and then I realized, oh, like Sodom and Gomorrah is not ready yet. Like that's something that I need to keep maturing in and bringing in and right. i need to let that minister to me as well right so then sunday comes i'm ready to throw down and yeah so um i think when it comes to david and goliath i think a lot of us are really like the underdog yes like yeah the kid you know his family is against him yeah. you know and this whole like victim yeah you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> 
And it kind of gives us hope, like yeah. we all feel. And like David was a kid. And I think to be Isaac, I think he's in his 17 years old or 18. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's that old. Yeah, and teenage so like years. he comes rudy, passionate, and all of us really love that. We're, yeah. we're, that's motivating, you know. And the more I looked at it, you know, how, the amount of times I've listened to this and heard this sermon or preached this sermon, I start to realize none of us want to be an average kid. Nobody wants to, he's just average. He's yeah. probably like, Five six, five seven. At this, you know, he's still growing. Yeah. Um, he's at a very disadvantage to this guy. Yeah. And then I look at Goliath, and the way it describes Goliath was he he has a customized armor, mm-hmm. so it's not like just metal; it's like bronze. Yeah. And he has like a customized, like the dude's almost ten feet tall. And he's a champion. He has all this experience, and the guy has like this this presence about him and people run from him. Yeah. I said, I think we all want to be Goliath. I don't think we want, I think we like the idea of David. Oh, the underdog. But when it comes down to it, you want your bank account like Goliath. Facts. You want your, you want to be successful like Goliath. Facts. You know, and who wouldn't want to be the tallest person in the room? Facts. <laughs> who wouldn't want to, you know what I mean? Like who wouldn't want to be like the biggest facts? You know what I mean? Like you want to be the most successful decorated fighter. And you show up, all eyes on you. Yeah. That's Great. what we want. And yeah. I said, Oh, this is the story about how we all want to be this dude. Yeah, bro. And yeah, bro. And that's and that is the part that just boom. Yeah. Just like whoa. Like I had never I had never entered the story like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I had never gotten, I had never heard it in that way. And, and, and that's why I was like, bro, we let's talk about this because the thing is that in today's culture, that's what it is, bro. Like, it's so true. Like all eyes on you, all eyes on you. You know what I mean? Like we truly, like we, like you said, it's so true. We love the idea of David. We love to hear ourselves we want to be listened to and and be seen as a david we want the underdog story we want that oh man i you know i rose out of the ashes you know what i mean like oh man i came from nothing you know i mean i pulled myself from my own bootstraps you know i mean like we want that story and a lot of what we're listening to in culture Mm -hmm. in podcasts in um you know in different uh you know even interviews that i've had like we've heard and resonated with some real beautiful stories you know what i mean and so we love that underdog we love mm-hmm. that rocky balboa yeah you know we love that that troy you mm-hmm. know the troy scene the troy the gladiator yeah the, you know and but really really the society that we live in being a david is not enough Mm-mm. that's just david is an average person he's an average size yeah he's he's like the rest of us so that's not enough. That's not that doesn't cut it in our society. Yeah, you know, um, we don't want to marry someone like that. We don't want an average person. Yeah, um, we want pepper. We want something that somebody who has like pep. We want somebody who is like special talent. That we want this like this. And Goliath shows us that. Show us, and I'm gonna say that there's nothing wrong with having a successful business. There's nothing wrong right. in having a customized car or whatever, there's nothing wrong. But there is something wrong with Goliath. And it's very clear. He he got to the point where he's such a champion that he can he looks at people like dogs. Mm. Like you you send me a kid who's who's like a dog? You come with me and look at the stick? Like and the way he speaks of himself is Goliath is so self absorbed. Goliath is so in a sense a narcissist yeah you know what i mean like this guy is just the life is all about him he's the main character of the story of the army of the whole thing yeah and and i think that's the society that i think we all want i think we want to be that we yeah. want to be the main jam we want to be the main star yeah. that's what we want that's what it comes down to it yeah that's, you know? yeah it's crazy bro no and, and it's true man and 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 it even brought some conviction you know what i mean like to me you know it wasn't so much like ooh, you know what i mean because a lot of times we can go into a sermon and be like yeah yeah <laughs> i know some people like that you know like i know but it's 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 harder to be able to walk in and 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 you know with the humility to be like dang like 
let me examine myself. Let me truly examine myself and be like, do, am I in love with the idea of being a David? But in reality, what am I pursuing? Am I really pursuing a lifestyle of David? Or mm -hmm. am I over here? Am I really pursuing this champion? Yeah. And I think a lot of times, um, so how I, how I personally arrived to this like perspective of Goliath is, am I build, am I building my fatherhood in this demeanor? Mm. Am I building my, as a husband, yeah. am I acting like Goliath where like bow down to me? Mm. Like I look at my wife and it's like, are you like, I'm the champion here. Yeah. I'm the man here. Like, do you know my experience? Without me, this army's nothing. Mm. And I started, I started acting that out. I started acting like Goliath before I preached this message. And I said, okay, well, let me be a Goliath to my kids. Like, and I started scoffing at my kids. Yeah. You're nothing. You're nothing without me. And I started acting. So when I preach these messages, I try to go into a character. And I try to think, like, whenever I arrive, I'm Goliath. I'm the man to look at. And I try to get into this mindset yeah. to be abrasive, to be something like, you don't know nothing about my story. But if you if you and I ever went to toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you're going down. I'm taking, I'm going to yeah. feed your body to the birds. I'm going to humiliate you even after your death. Yeah. That's how, that's how, that's how over consumed I am about myself. Yeah. You know, there is no God. Your gods, where is your gods at? You're only, it's just me and you. Yeah. I'm going to destroy you. Yeah. And so like, the way he spoke about, and, def and the Bible says he defies David's God. Yeah. He's like, there is no God here. It's yeah. me and you, and you'll see right now. Yeah. You come with me with a little stick. You come with me with a little pebble. What are you going to do with that? And I realized, wow, God sent a kid to bring down this huge dude with a stone. That's yeah. all it took. That's all. And I realized that you can build everything like Goliath, but all it would take is one stone. Everything yeah. will come crumbling down. Yeah. That's crazy. It is, man. And and I think that's the reality that we have to we have to face. And like you said, there's nothing wrong with wanting to build, you know, a successful family. You know, nothing wrong with wanting to build a successful business. There's nothing wrong with, you know, even wanting to build, you know, a successful church. There's nothing wrong with wanting to build, you know, to have success around you and to surround you. But I think that the mistake that we can make or that we can fall into is that like Goliath at one time, like who knows how his self-esteem was, you know, we don't really know, you know, we can't, we can only kind of assume context to, to when he started, right. Mm -hmm. We can only assume, you know, but he was breeded in a way where, yeah, like, you know, triumph after triumph, you know what I mean? Like each triumph that he had, I can imagine, you know, that was adding to his armor, you know? It was adding to his pride. And it was, exactly. And I think that's just another, instead of saying pride, we're just calling it Goliath. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's the truth is, the truth is we all want to build our lives around pride. Yeah. And pride is really, um, like every, every triumph was producing and growing his pride. Mm. There's a difference between pride and dignity. You can walk, you can build your life on dignity. Yeah. That's completely different from pride. Pride can hurt yourself. Pride can hurt others. Ultimately become a mess. Yeah. But dignity is different. You can be proud of what God is giving you right. because you know that it came from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I've always had a conflict with those two, you know, like mm -hmm. as far as understanding those two. Um Let's break that down a little bit more because, yeah, like, it, or maybe even some examples of like, what does pride look like? And then what is, what is a, a, a healthy pride though? Like you said, that healthy pride of having dignity in what you do or dignity in, in your work. I can get in a fight with my wife and have an argument. And I know I'm right. And then she thinks she's right. And then we go back and forth, we go back and forth, go back and forth. Um, we can talk about um, something so small. We argue over something so small. And that will lead us, if she's full of pride and I'm full of pride, that will lead us to stack of more arguments. Mm. It will lead us to something so small that could be fixed. Yeah. But instead of doing humbling ourselves, 
I refuse to go down. I'm not going to go down in this battle. Yeah. One of us, the Philistine, and one of us, the Israelite. Yeah. And pride made me think that I'm David at this point because I'm the man of God here. Yeah. I'm the pastor here. Yeah. And so I'm fighting with my wife and I'm arguing with my wife. And then this could lead one day of fighting. This could lead to two, two days of fighting. We're still fighting. We're no longer talking. We're now going to best sleep. We're now sleeping angry. We're now upset. Then after a week later, after a week later, and this was just about the dog peeing on the couch or something. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like something so small, right? Pride will prolong and refuses to humble itself. Mm. Pride refuses. But if I'm a dignified man and I'm, I walk with dignity, I can look at her and say, you know what? Hey, regardless of right or wrong, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm making you feel this way. Am I making you feel misunderstood? Yeah. Dignity allows you to come into the situation not to hurt anyone, but it allows you to come with a perspective of wisdom and love and saying, I know who my God is and God would never treat me this way. Mm-hmm. So why would I treat you that way? And so we get into this fight and and it's something small. Yeah. And then I go, I she walks away. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna shoot her a text. Hey, I'm sorry. Like, I I should have never did that. And I I think I I overreacted. And I hope you can forgive me. Right. She comes out. She's like, me too. And I'm like, me too. And it turns into a ten minute fight. Yeah. That dignity. Yeah, because you're 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 dignifying your marriage over everything else. Yeah. And it's like, yes, I think dignity roots itself in humility and in the character and nature of who God is. Mm. Not the character and nature of my marriage. It's my dignity is rooted in who God is. So what it, who is God? Love. Yeah. Humility, patience, kindness, joy. So I got to be able to reflect my dignity out of that. That has to blossom out somehow. Pride doesn't root itself in that. Pride right, roots itself in abrasiveness. The victory at all costs, mm-hmm. at all costs, whatever it takes. Yeah. Even if I have to sabotage you, it can lead to sabotaging, and that's why, like, it becomes so petty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, pride yeah. allows you to look so petty, and I'm just like, yeah. really? Oh man, you're preaching to the choir, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it's true, man. And I, you know, I've, um, because that's one of the things, bro. That that you know, if I'm if I'm gonna be real, let's go there, man. Let's go there. I'm gonna be <laughs> real. Back to the off. I'm gonna be right? real, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is off beat podcast, man. We we speak real, authentic conversations, man. And and if I'm real, man, that that's one of the things that um, I've always struggled with. You know, when it comes to my marriage, you know, mm-hmm. not just in my marriage, but even in relationships, is you know, I could get petty, you mm-hmm. know, and I know that. Now I understand more than ever. I understand it more, you know, because what's starting to happen is that, you know, when I get prideful in these situations, you know, in these arguments in my own marriage, you know, I, I think that by getting petty, I'm going to win. Like she's going to eventually see my point, you know, I, 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 as far, that's what I think. Right. And I'm like, you know, like yesterday, it was a was a, was a was a perfect example of me. You know what? Like understanding, like little by little, I'm I'm pulling away from that because I started to see that, bro. Like, it's not going to change anything. Like this this pattern is going to continue. Oh, if so you you're continue. right now? Are you saying that you're in the, the process of uprooting from pettiness? Yeah, it's yeah. Up, I call that uprooting season. So you're yeah, like, you're just like oh. Okay, so when you pull away, that's uprooting. Yeah, because I would talk about that. You have to uproot bitterness. Yeah, and maybe we should be talking about uprooting as well. Yeah, how do we do that? And how do we identify that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, let's let's yeah, let's do it because yeah, that's I I was rooting myself literally rooting myself and and a lot of the things I would go days without you know what we would get into an argument we would get into a fight and and I would go days days you know oh, what I mean without talking to my wife Ooh. you know days without trying to address her you know and i know that man that was so toxic it was so toxic in our marriage and and it was so unfair and so unnecessary you know what i mean but you know god 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 had been dealing with me for a long time you know and i want to say this last year and even this in this season of transition you know because now it's like there's nothing there in this season of our life right now 
I don't want to say that there's nothing for us to fall back on. I don't want to say it like that, but in a way, there isn't anything for us to fall back on. It's just you and her. It's just us. That's great. It's just us. And the thing is, because for so long we fall back to ministry, okay. you know, which is a great thing. Yeah, I'm not amazing. knocking on. Yeah. It's amazing. It's it's a beautiful thing to serve people. But we need this mm-hmm. season, you know. And I really feel that God was like, okay, like George, you know. You, are you going to continue to be petty with the only person that is with you in this season? One hundred percent. Like I am with you, George. I am with you, but your wife is with you. Hello. And so I started to like. Yeah. It started to like boom, boom. And I'm not saying that I got it down perfect. No, like you know what I mean? Learning because it's an uprooting season. Yeah, you got to learn how to do it because. Um, so I love. I love working in the field. I can do yeah. it. I love getting my hands dirty. I love watering my grass and yeah. everything. But there are certain ways of pulling up root. You can't just tear a root. You have to uproot. So uh, there's a difference. One person that can tear off roots think that they're doing good. Yeah. And so sometimes just because you're aware, awareness isn't enough sometimes. Mm. And I think we think that's, that's the answer. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware of how I'm acting. And in reality, you're just tearing off the root, but you're not, I mean, tearing off the weeds. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're uprooting. Yeah. And so when we say uproot, that means repentance. So it's one thing to acknowledge a weed. Yeah. And it's one thing to get rid of a weed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so like, 100%. so I think, let me give you another example. And I'm not really proud of this. This is so dumb, but like my brother-in-law, and I think I'm going to use my brother-in-law, Sergio, him and I were always like, we've always been friends. Like I remember him coming around the house, you know, like he just, just do dating my sister. And then <laughs> yeah. now he's married to my sister. And, yeah. you know, he's a tall dude. He's six, four, big dude. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the one dude that I'm going to throw down with. Uh, I will always throw down on my brother-in-law and I don't know why we, we fought so many times. We wrestled and he's like my brother. It's like today, like I'm like, I'm proud that he's my brother. Yeah. But there was a time I was so, it was like, I look back it's so stupid. <laughs> oh, like and it's not even him. It was yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was being petty to him at one point and I've learned a valuable lesson. And if anything, I got an upgrade. But I'll tell you how I got an upgrade from the uproot. Mm-hmm. So I'm a pastor at the time, and him and I were, I don't know, I, I don't even, I have no idea what we were in. An argue, we got into an argument and to the point where he got really heated. And then I'm like, I wanted to, I wanted to fight him. I wanted to like just go at him. I, I told, I told him, I, I don't care if you beat me up or I don't care. I just started saying stupid things. I'm like, but as long as I hit you, you're gonna feel it. That's all I want you to know. And I'm like, I'm gonna hurt you. That's all I want from you. That's all, that was satisfy my burden yeah. for me. And he's like, come on, let's go. And then, then my parents found out. My wife found out. My sister found out. They threw us in a room. They, I had to go. I had to go. I know, okay. I had to go to. I had to go to my mom's house, my mom and dad's house, and my dad just looked at me. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I can picture I didn't see I can him." Make- and I said, "And I wanted to tackle him in the middle, in the living room." And it's and Sergio was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, bro, I can." T- I'm I'm like imagining this whole dude, situation. Sergio was just like, "What are you doing? Like, you're an idiot!" Like, and I'm like, "No, no, no, blah, 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 blah. and and my I think it was my mom that said this. She it was my mom. She goes, "So this is how you want to like this is your solution." I'm like, "Yeah." Like, I just want, like, I, and she goes, so you, this is how you carry yourself? Mm-hmm. And then I stopped talking. She goes, so you carry yourself. You have to you have to express yourself this way because all this happened because you don't know how to self-control yourself. Mm-hmm. And I felt like a little kid when she said that. And I hated yeah. that she, she was addressing my pettiness. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like... <sighs> And then I kind of like glanced at Sergio and he just looking at me like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. And then like I felt at that point I came back because somebody pettiness is sprouts out of, out of control. You don't know how to control your emotions. Yeah. You don't know how to control your thoughts. So all you want to do is just be angry 
and be violent. Yeah, and and that's what pride does, and it's and it's always rooted in pride. Yeah, and that's it comes back down because pride. It, if my if my pride gets shifted just a little bit, mm-hmm. and I don't have self control, yeah, I'm gonna get out of control, and then I will fill it with anger. And so when I feel that with anger, I'm gonna say, I got no words for you, but I got hands for you. Yeah, and we, I'm gonna show you that I don't know your intentions, but I'm gonna show you my intentions. And so I realized, obviously, I was in the wrong. So I went up to Sergio, and I hugged him. He kissed me. And I'm like, <sighs> he's like, and he's just like, you're stupid sometimes. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, and, <laughs> and the one thing is Bad. that one thing I've always appreciated my relationship with my brother-in-law is that Sergio's always been super truthful with me. Yeah. I surround that. I love that. I always welcome that. Yeah. And I've always been super truthful to him. So like we have we're always like there's no hidden cards. Yeah, and I think that yeah, and that's one of the I, I'm glad that you brought that up because the truthfulness, mm-hmm. you know, the truthfulness it, it that I think that's why it's so important to and that's why the Bible says, like, you know, there's there we always use that scripture and the truth shall set you free. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course in context it's you know the the truth of, of Christ, you know, but truth in general sets us free. 100%. You know, and I think that when we are open to truth, you know, whether it's it, it be the Holy Spirit ministering to us or whether it be through our spouses or whether it be through another person, you know, welcoming that truth, you know, what I mean, is one of the things that is truly going to help break you know that that it's going to help us to start because look i i look at it like this kind of going back to even your analogy of um the fields you know um you know because i i love the fields too man i i when i was in mexico i worked the fields a lot i bet that was so much fun yeah no it was it was it was hard work yeah but you know what man i learned so much but i remember the lentil fields i don't know have you ever cut lentil Uh, no okay so lentil you have to you can't just bend down you can't just bend down and pull it okay you know you can't you know because there's so much seeds on the lentil okay. there's so much seed hanging and that's that's what's valuable yes you know everything else that's is, is it's it's yeah that's the main economy of that plant everything else is going to be food for the animals which is also of great value but you have to take the root out and you have to preserve the seed. Wow. And so one of the things that um, you had to get on your knees, mm. you had to posture yourself. And that's why it was such hard work because, you know, you couldn't just, you know, just bend down and just grab because number one, it's, it, you're going to ruin the plant. And number two, you're going to get tired. Mm. So you had to posture yourself. And I love it because in that analogy, spiritually, that's the, what we have to do. Yeah. We have to bow down and posture ourselves so that we can collect what needs to be collected so we can uproot what truly needs to be uprooted. Okay, so can I I want to piggyback on that because um I think truth and posture is only as good as a person who could be a student. Mm. Um, so when I got in an argument and all that whole, that whole situation with Sergio, I wasn't, tw- I wasn't in my twenties. I was in my thirties. And so I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Being stupid like that, you know, yeah. I, I'm still, I'm still like 31 or 32 at the time. And I have my kid, I'm 32. This was just before my second kid. And, but here's something I've learned. My parents were still raising me after I was married. Mm. And it was up to me if I could be a student to the situation. And I think your growth, your transformation is only as good as your studentship. If you know how to be a student of these things, you are asking to learn. You are willing to learn the posture. You're willing to know that there's a different way of cutting to getting an orange off the tree Mm -hmm. that requires a different speed. Yeah. If you're going to do lentils, that requires a different posture. Yeah. So I think I, I hate the fact that we treat the Bible as a, as a, a straight line. 
Yeah. When there's so much layers to it. Yeah. When it comes to our hearts. Yeah. My emotions are completely different from your emotions. A hundred percent. And if that's true, then I have to respect your emotions because I cannot cookie cutter this to you. Yeah. You know, and so going back to this whole thing about this, this Goliath, no, we don't do that. All we do and all we focus in this society, in this culture, all we do is yeah. win. The one who's winning the most is the most successful. Yeah. And I don't want to be David. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. I don't want to be David. And I don't want to go back to this whole thing. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be average. I don't want to, be, I don't want to live at disadvantage. Yeah. But I, I want to go back and I want to circle back to David because David... I think we missed the point of David. I think David didn't get the victory because uh, he just trusted God. David was able to accept that he was 17. David was able to accept that he was at disadvantage. Yeah. David was willing to accept that he can die on that field. David was willing to accept that the armor of king, the king's armor, was just too big. And he says, I can't do nothing with this. I think it's a matter of accepting where we're at. Dang. Bro. <laughs> that part right there, bro. That part, bro. Is what we are so unwilling sometimes to accept. If you're poor... Accept that. But society, you're going to hear other podcasts, you're poor, don't accept that. You have a dream and you have this. No, accept your reality. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Accept that you had, if you were raised in a bad family, accept that. Now, that's not if, but I think what people hear is when I say accept that, people say, no, that is not my conclusion. I didn't mm -hmm. say conclusion. Right. I did not say conclusion. Yeah. A acceptance and conclusions are completely two different things. Completely definitions. different things. You acknowledge where you're at in your life. And I'm going to tell you right now, the only reason why I know how to accept is because I was born with microgia. And I have like, I had about 13 operations yeah. growing up from the age of four to all the way to like 12. And I could not accept my body. I could not accept, I had a speech impediment. I could not accept until the moment I met Christ, I accepted Jesus. He accepted me for who I am. And I accepted all that I am who I am. And I said, I have no ears. I can't hear completely. I don't have, I don't have, I'm, I may be an incomplete, deep form. I have something that's wrong with me and I'm going to have to live with this. And I accept that. But that's not who I am today. Mm -hmm. So I'll meet you at the field. Yeah. I'll meet you at the field and I'll show up just like David did. Yeah. I accept where I'm at. I may not be the I may not be the champion. I may not have all this experience. I may not have the, the advantage, but I'll show up. I'll I'll still show up because God created me this way. Yeah, and I think that's what the difference is between, you know, because I think a lot of times people are like, "Oh, if I accept my reality, then I'm then I become a victim." Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the thin line is like, "No, you can accept your reality." It's for example, you know, let's use a very simple example is like, "I can accept that my car is almost on E." Yes. You know what I mean? Like I accept it, but whether I'm going to stay on E or I'm going to get to a gas station yeah, exactly. is going to be up to me. I can pull over and be like, oh my, God, my car is on E, man. Uh, why? You know what I mean? Like, why is my car on E? Or let me pull up the GPS and find out where the nearest gas station is. Yeah. And I think that's the big difference is, is uh, people need to understand that there's nothing wrong with accepting. And that was one of the most difficult things for me, bro. Because the thing is that whether I... It's hard to admit, but the thing is that a lot of times we don't want to, bro. We don't want to accept because we have voices around us. We have TikToks around us. We have Instagram reels around us telling us, no, no, you, you, you're there. Well, well, get your butt up, get your A up. You know, you're, you're the bad MF or you're this, you're that, you know? And it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. But, but at the same time, like. It's it, it can be so dangerous because if you don't accept first the things that you have to deal with, 
If you don't accept the flaws that you are currently living with, if you don't accept the current emotional state that you are, it, it's not It's not that you have to stay there. It's not your conclusion. But you're never going to address it if you keep masking it with success after success after success. Because it's all guess denial. What? It's denial. And, and it's crazy because like so many times people say like, why do I want to get married or why do I want to be committed or why do I want this or and like these just the way we look at people, we often blame other people for our reality. Yeah. You know, and that's the victim. I think we do. We do that. Rather, you're rather you're successful. I seen people talk about this. And it's just like, well, what good is if I you, you, you and I are completely different people? Yes, we're completely different people. But what does that make you? Take responsibility for your own stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to. You can still be loving. You can still be helpful. Yeah. Now, there's there's a, a message that goes around, especially on TikTok, where like the nice guy, nobody's nobody nowhere in the Bible says to be nice, but to be kind, that's different. Yeah. And I think sometimes we don't need to be doormats. We don't need to be any of those things, but we need to be a dignified people. Right. We need to know who, where we stem from or stem from. And I think um, I teach my kids, whatever school you, you're going to have, you're going to deal with all sorts of different realities. That's their reality. Respect yeah. it. If it, come to, if it becomes harmful, protect yourself at all costs. But who are you? Mm. What kind of family do you come from? And it's about yeah. your identity. And I think... We're, we're, we're dealing with so much messages. There's another part in that story, David. Uh, one, of my, one of the brothers right after service, Gio, says something to me. And I was like, oh, dang. Like, it was really good. He goes, hey, I would thought you were going to cover this, but, you know, whatever. I'm going to tell you. And I said, yeah. He goes, you know, David's older brother was very upset because David was asking questions in the army. And Elab comes up. And he goes, what are you doing here? Yeah. I know the evilness of your heart. I know your pride. I know what you're trying to do. Where's your sheep's at? But Gio said, you know, what's, you know what's so interesting about that situation? Is that David turned his back on that comment. And we have to know that there are certain messages and comments. And we have to learn when, to, even if it's coming from your family, even if it's attacking your identity, you have to turn your back. I oh, love it. And I think David turned his back and he didn't just see himself as a shepherd. He saw himself as the God, the father, I'm his son, and I know what my father is capable of doing. Yeah. And I think our identity always has to be planted as God, the father. Yeah. Always. I think that's the greatest relationship you can ever build on. And I think a lot of people want to build their relationship on God, the Lord. He is my Lord. I'm his property. Mm. That's good. I mean, I believe in that. Uh, Jesus is my friend. God is my friend. I think that's good. But there's nothing more intimate than a father. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. It, that's so true, man. And, and I think even kind of circling back to Goliath a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, we know that what happened was is what happened, you know, and what was meant to be was meant to be, you know, but, you know, it, just kind of playing the imaginary, you know, kind of putting paraphrasing or, or just, you know, kind of just putting its own twist, you know, like Goliath, he was, he was raised up in a way, you know what I mean? Like to become that person, mm -hmm. you know, he became the center, you know, he became the victorious champion, mm -hmm. you know, and he surrounded himself because he surrounded himself with people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone who surrounded Goliath and everyone who Goliath allowed to be surrounded with, they pretty much just praised him. Mm -hmm. They pretty much just built him up as this like, hey, you know, you're you're the man. You're the man. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of like, what are you feeding yourself with and who are you surrounding yourself with? Yeah. So if you don't know, just go on your Internet browser, go to your history. If you do that. Um, go to your Instagram and go to Explore page, and it kind of tells you everything. Go to your <laughs> go to your your algorithm, kind of tells you what kind of what kind of what type of food you're eating. Yeah, you know, um, 
Another way is looking is where, what, if you listen to podcasts and look at all your podcasts, what, what messages are you listening yeah. to? And um, I'm not a person that likes to say the word balance because I just think the, is I don't believe in uh, the fairness of everything. Yeah. And that's a whole nother conversation, but yeah. I believe in like what is complimenting you? Yeah. What is, what is allowing you to, to grow and reflect what yeah. what do you want to reflect today? Yeah. And for me personally, as a follower of Jesus, I want to reflect Jesus. I don't want to reflect Aaron. Right. And I think that's the message that everybody wants to reflect themselves. Yeah. Everybody wants to reflect that. That's Goliath. Yeah. Everybody wants yeah. to reflect the better version of themselves. Nobody wants to reflect the broken, humble shepherd boy. Nobody wants that. We love the idea, but we'd rather reflect the Goliath. Yeah, and 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 we say words like I want I want to I want to just be the better version of myself. I'm just trying to be positive. I'm just trying to and it's like like you're not enough. Yeah. You're not enough and somebody who can't accept that will try to act like Goliath or like what you said earlier, they'll try to mask their triumphs and yeah. try to make themselves look good. And it doesn't take much to bring that thing down. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, I think for me, my personal belief, I want to reflect Jesus because if I do that, then people will know that I didn't build this life. Yeah, yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I actually had a conversation with someone um, not too long ago about that, you know, and because we we're talking, you know, and and we started to share, you know, um, our feelings about certain things, you know, and I even you know, started to open up about, you know, certain situations that were going on in my life. And, you know, but one of the conclusions that we came to and that I brought up, I was like, but you know what, man, like at the end of the day, you know, what's, what's, what's so conflicting and what's so difficult is that we are God's people, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you know, he is my father, you know, and he's loved me. And, 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 and I believe it with all my heart, I'm his child. And, and I believe it with all my heart that he's my savior and he's he's my Lord. And and I was like, and that's what's so conflicting because you do have the world, you know, when it comes to relationships, you do have the world telling you like, hey, man, you know what? Like, if they don't want to be in your life, like, psh, boom, scratch them, out. scratch them out. You know what I mean? Cross them out and then go back and you could talk about how, you know, you pulled yourself up and about the haters and about, man, oh, everybody who hated me, everybody who doubted me, everybody who threw dirt on me, everybody who this, like, look at me now. And that's what's tempting. Mm -hmm. I was like, but as God's people, like, that's not us. The words that Jesus says, you've heard it said before, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, mm. wish your enemies well. Exactly. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray but, for them. But, yeah, and pray for them. But if you wish, I wish you the best. Who to wish your enemy the best? Yeah. And it's so counterintuitive. But I also think that in all of the process of like um, social media and all these messages, I think I I think we could talk about be aware, be careful what you're listening. And, yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, we're all going to go back on our social media. We're going to do whatever we're going to do. Yeah, 100%. But if we're going to really want to grow or really try to um, to see God or to see that reflection mm -hmm. of like a dignity life, I think we need to ask this. How well is your questions on a daily basis? How many questions do you ask so that you can learn something from something. How much wisdom are you getting from everybody? You know? And like, I think I'm going to just tell you where I'm at in my life. Um, I've devoted all my teachings, all my attention to my children. And I say, okay, I create all these different scenarios, like awful scenarios, funny scenarios, and the reason why I do this is because I want to ask them questions to help them understand perspectives. And so whenever they give me an answer, I just begin to question the answer. And then if I see them feeling insecure about their answer, then I say, do you feel like you're second guessing yourself? They're like, yeah, I am. I said, that's okay. I'm like, and I want them to know I'm not looking for the correct answer. I just want to know what's in your mind. 
I just want to know what's in your emotion. How does it make you feel when someone is, is being abused at home? And I and I'm not saying I love to see the reaction, but it makes me feel good to see. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Like, but how do you know that's not reality? Is that reality? They're like, no, that's reality. What? How do you? How can you identify someone who's going through that? They're like, I don't know. I said, why do you think we don't know that? Why can't we? Why can't we identify people are being abused at home? Why can't we identify that? Can we? Can we identify that? Mm. Goliath won't let you. Goliath won't let you because all eyes on me. Yeah. I'm the main character. But the moment you walk in, like David, just asking questions, what's going on here? What's happening here? That's not true. That's wrong. Yeah. We need to learn how to live life with observation. And the best thing is, is that you walk in observing curious and noticing that person is behaving but that's not what God called you to behave that way yeah. why are you so insecure hey how's it going be my friend come close to me yeah and then I'm gonna be truthful and honest with you yeah no you can do it I want to build up that person I want to tr- I want to trade the lie for a truth yeah and I think that's for me. I want to raise my kids in truth, but I want them to explore everything. I want them to learn how to do those things. I can't, you know, I, I can't change the world, but I can come into the world of my children. I could have yeah. this wonderful conversation with my wife. And I always invite anybody that want to have a conversation with me. I'm always willing to do that. Yeah. Anything. I, and so I, some people pick me up on that. They're like, hey, I want to let's go out for dinner. I have a lot of questions. And this dude just went, ballistic on question with me <laughs> i mean he just started saying oh what about all religion what about this? i'm like holy moly but i love it let's talk yeah let's talk and i think we need to we need to be a, a society that knows how to have questions learn how to have conversation yeah i think we need to stop debating yeah yeah we're yeah and that's so true man and we're we're, we're so combative that's what it creates it com- creates a combative what color are you are you red or blue yeah you know, like, how do you vote? Well, oh, oh, and it's like, and it's just like, it's so abrasive. Yeah. And it's like, how can you have a conversation? How can you, how can you be realistic? I mean, this isn't like debating sometimes feels like a cartoon. Yeah. Like from the day, back in the days where it's like, there's the evil one out there and we must all got to conquer. It's like, but that's not how it works. That's not how reality works. Yeah. Somebody who's who is, you know, acting evil or somebody who's acting wrong, they they have a story too. There's something. Yeah. There's something there, There's and something. they can change too. Exactly. There's been movies made like that, like oh, this guy's the villain. He's the villain. Yeah. And then when we found out, oh, this is why he's the villain. Yeah. You know what? That right now that you bring that up, man. I don't know if you've if if you've watched it yet, but have you ever watched um. Have you watched it's it, I think it just came out the uh, new I think it's on HBO um, the new De La Hoya no. documentary oh, bro you got to watch it man yeah. the golden boy I think it's called the golden boy the okay. documentary bro man dude like there is a part in there man where honestly like there there has been so many um, you know there's it, he's gone through a lot okay. you know the golden boy um, Oscar De La Hoya he's gotten into a lot of things but in this documentary, man, like he goes raw, like he just unleashes his story, okay. you know. And one of the things, man, is that, you know, he he came to a point in his life where he just he got tired of masking, mm. you know what I mean? His reality, his true reality, not what everyone else was perceiving, you know, and it's almost like and it kind of reminds me of that Goliath like they because from the from the very start they put him on a pedestal mm. you know they put him on a pedestal and you know what i mean they're like yeah the golden boy and you know what i mean and his life just started to build off of that it's crazy because like he even started to build it off of a lie which i it's crazy because like he came out with it that it was never actually true like he said that um he wanted to win the olympic gold he wanted to win the olympic gold because it was during the same time when his mom was dying from cancer Mm. which is a tragic tragic thing right but he 
he said like he said like that in the interview he doesn't know why but it just kind of came out and it's crazy because that's kind of going back to like the underdog story you know and they they created this narrative they're like so what do you want to do and he's like well my mom she's dying from cancer and you know the last thing she told me was win the gold for me Mm. but that was never true oh yeah it It was was, never true wow so he created this narrative and he's like and he's like, once I said it, and I realized I there's said no that, coming back from it. there's no coming back. But it's sold. It's sold. And it created this like, oh, yes, yes, the gold. He, yes, yes, win he the gold. It, he, did he did it. And then it just kept going, kept going. But he was never dealing with the true emotions. Mm. He was never dealing with. Well, how is it that you really feel about your mom dying? Mm. How is it? How was your relationship truly with your mom? Mm. Because in this documentary, he starts to go on to things. So he he created a pattern of just masking, masking. Yeah. masking. It's amazing when you start to live life of pride. Um, you make your everybody wants to make themselves look good. Yeah. Even if you have to like throw a little pepper lie in it. <laughs> yeah. You got to throw a little season in it. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm doing good. Yeah. <laughs> but in I'm reality blessed, like it, it, yeah right <laughs> like yeah you know and it's like but the thing is it's like you know we are a society especially the western culture we really don't know how to say a uh, vulnerability response yeah you know what i mean like we don't really know how to say like oh man it's this week was uh it's a little rough one but hey i'm here yeah. like we don't know how to say like this was a rough week yeah we just know how to say, oh, it's good. It's yeah. good. Hey, I'm really good. Because it keeps everybody at a distance from my mess. Yeah. Um, not realizing that it sabotages you from creating more friends. So we become really less, we become a society that's less friendly. Yeah. But more fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we build it by like, we and we build it on a petty, on a petty, yeah. on a petty place. Like, yeah. So everything good, everything is fine. I'm going places. My Instagram looks good. All this looks good. This, 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 this. But in reality, it's like vulnerability is not there. And and I think you know, masking. Um, that's another. That's another breakdown of the of the Goliath is that we want to build. That's that's the thing. Once you start lying about. Where you're at, right. it becomes hard to get back. It's hard to come back. Pride allows you to lie. Yeah. It to build up this thing that's not true. Yeah. And and also, if it's not true, then it, down deep in your heart, yeah. you know that you're insecure, but you won't ever admit it. Yeah. Bro, I've struggled with that my whole life. You know, I struggled with that my entire life. And I didn't know that I struggled with it until it started to catch up to me. And that's the thing about pride, lying, you know, um, not living a life that's open, you know, is that it eventually begins to catch up to you, yeah. you know, because you begin to see, for, for, for a long time, it's easy to mask it. It's easy to mm-hmm. put it under the rug. But once it really starts to catch up, and for me, it started to catch up in my emotions. Mm. You know, it started to catch up because I started to show frustration. Mm. I started to show more anger. I started to show because, it, you know, I was bottling everything inside. You know, I didn't want to invite. And the thing is that I, I had created this in my life since I was a kid. And then when it, even when I came, you know, into the church, you know what I mean? Like it, it, in the beginning, it was like, yeah, yeah, deal with these things. Like I, I was in a state of vulnerability, you know, cause that's one of the beautiful things about when you come to Christ is that, you know, it, he he positions you in a place of vulnerability. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that brokenness that, that happens in your life, in your heart, you know, he's positioning you, but a lot of times we, we, we don't realize it, or maybe we're, we're too immature to realize, or maybe sometimes we just don't know. Or sometimes and, we don't want to face it. Or we don't want to face it, you know, and, and for a long time, I didn't want to face it, you know, and, or I didn't, I, I, I think for me, I didn't really know how to face it. So when I started to be put on a pedestal, you know, when I started to, when my talent started to show and they're like, oh man, this, you're talented, you know, you got the goods, you got a calling, you know, you got this. So 
that it's like i do really like what is that like i don't know what that is but it sounds good to me like yeah. well yeah here's a mic here's this and and i started to like oh yeah i am good at this like <laughs> like like this is like okay so this was my purpose but in reality like god was like yeah that was never my intention for you like my intention was to be to to create this openness with you to create this transparency for you so that you can begin a healing process inside mm. of you you know and so i learned how to mask it with success you know i learned how to mask it with titles i learned how to mask it but eventually here's the thing about life man is that eventually you're going to come across something and, and it's crazy because this is where I relate so much with the Golden Boy in that documentary because he go, he gets to a place in his documentary where he talks about when he starts to have kids. Mm. And, and the thing is, man, that when you start dealing, it's one thing to deal with other people's lives. You know, it's, you know, let's say you're a leader and you're in charge of other people. You know, that's a complete different thing because even them, they can be they can see you in your in that light that you create. But there's nothing that is going to unmask all that. And I'm just going to say it, that BS, like your kids. <laughs> like having the responsibility of like, you're not being responsible for yourself anymore. You have a family, mm -hmm. you have kids. And it's crazy because in that documentary, he says that he, he talks about it then, but he didn't know how to explain it then. He was like, I was terrified. He's like, I look back at I look back at it now, and when my when I started to have kids, I didn't realize how terrified I was to be a father. Mm. So I was gone all the time. I used boxing to get away. I used traveling to get away. I used whatever was in my reach to get away from the responsibility of being he a ran. father. Me, I wasn't a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a professional anything. I didn't have a career where I was traveling all the time, but I did have a job and that's run. what I would use to mask. It's run. a matter of how we can run. However we can run. Yeah. And that's what I started to do. I started to run. I started to run, you know, from that responsibility, even though I was here, but in my heart and everything, that fear was just like, you know, and that's when these emotions started to come up. That's when, you know what I mean? Like the, the Goliath success was no longer there, you right. know, and I had to be confronted with like, George, are you going to deal with this? Or are you just going to continue to mask it? And I think it comes back down to what are you accepting? Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of times, you know, for me, uh, in moving forward and hearing the masking and the pride and the dignities and all those things, um, I just feel like one of the things that are very important in all of this conversation, I don't, I don't live my life and I don't focus my life on my mind rarely goes to here. I don't blame anybody. No. I don't blame anyone. I don't complain about anyone. I don't. And, and if you think about it, if you have to. I always like to try to like what I did, what I told you earlier. I am like, OK, I'm going to talk like Goliath. I'm going to say everything that he said. Mm -hmm. And I like to try to get into that mentality. Yeah. Do I do that? But does that feel natural to me? Because if it does, I am Goliath in this story. Yeah. And so then I say, am I a complainer? Well, let me, let me complain about someone. I'll just pick up someone. And if it feels natural to complain, that's what I'm naturally doing yeah. every single day. Am I a petty person? Okay, how do I do this? Act it out. And if it feels natural, that is what you normally do. Yeah. And so I can't really, I've learned not to complain. I don't know how to complain. I don't want to complain about anyone. I don't ever want anybody to feel like you're to blame for this. Yeah. Um, because it tells me that I don't need to worry about focusing on growing you, fixing you, repairing you, or any of that. Because I can't do it. Yeah. And you can't do it for me. Yeah. I can only do that for myself. Yeah. So when I listen to a podcast, I do it for myself. So that I can take self responsibility, yeah. and then I ask myself, "What do I want to represent?" And I always say, "Jesus." Now, when it comes to other people, um, says I can't repair you or fix you or change you. Since I can't do that, what can I do for you then? Yeah. 
well, I can serve you. I can help you. I can support you. I can listen to you. Yeah. I can talk to you. I can have fun with you. And I just begin to see that's what I can offer you. Yeah. And that doesn't sound like a lot, does it? No. It sounds pretty average. Yeah. But isn't it amazing that the average things that we want and the smallest things that we want are the biggest things that we want? Yeah. But we mis- and, but we mistake it for a Goliath. Yeah. That's so true, man. That's so true, bro. I love it. I love it, man. And that's why, like, that's why I wanted to talk about this, man, so much because, because yeah, you know, and again, it's not to bag, you know what I mean? It's not to, to put down anyone, you know what I mean? But, you know, we are, we are in a culture where we love the idea of a comeback story. We mm-hmm. love the idea of the underdog, even David and Goliath. We love the idea. It's a, it's a beautiful story. You know what I mean? Like, you know, David and Goliath picked up the rocks, took down the giant. It's a beautiful story. But it's it's a more difficult thing to actually analyze and to be self-aware and to admit, to actually admit, am I living a life of David? Am I accepting where I'm at? Am I willing to change the conclusion but still accept where I'm at? Mm-hmm. Or am I just looking to be surrounded by people that are going to make me a champion? You know, am I just going to carry myself throughout my life, throughout my marriage? And and I think that's one of the things like I love one of the things that you you told me one time in, in a conversation that we were having over coffee. And I think that was one of the things that just really it was a big confirmation for me. You know, you know, when you when we're talking about the transition and, um, you know, because I really was ready to kind of I, I really felt that you know what, we need to not necessarily step back, but we do kind of need to just understand, you know, that in this new season, we, we ministry kind of has to kind of has to be put, put to the side for a little bit. And for us to really refocus on what our family is about, Amen. you know what I mean? And, um, uh, and I remember I never I didn't tell that I, I I didn't discuss that really with you. I didn't say that. But I remember one of the things you told me, you're like, look, George, um, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember word for word. But you said you're like, look, George, like I, 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 I can't sit here and promise you anything or say this or say that. But one of the things that I can tell you is that I will always encourage you to be a better father. I will always encourage you to be a better husband. And I will always encourage you to be a better man of God. You know, those are the things that I can guarantee. And I said, man, you know what? Like, that's what it's crazy because it's like, that's what I needed to hear. Because there isn't a lot of people in society that are willing to sit with you and say, hey, how are you as a dad? How how are things going as a dad? How are things going as as how are things going with your kids? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're 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 doing soccer with them. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, you know it. it it's especially in the church world. It, it you know it sucks to say, but even in the church world, it's very hard to find that because in today's even in today's church era, it's it's all about what we can do. It's all about you know, and there's nothing wrong. I I, I believe in that so much and pulling people's talents and people's mm-hmm. giftings and and being able to use it for the kingdom to build other people up. I believe I still want that even through this podcast. That's that's still our goal. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You know, but there's also got to be a time to like, hey, how how is your marriage? Mm-hmm. How are things in the marriage field? Yeah, that's awesome. And I want to say within David and Goliath, because this everything you just said, I can still go back to David and Goliath. Are you ready for this? Yeah, go. Cool. Shoot. David was all about being the champion. But King Saul champion David. Mm. Israelites defined champions differently than the Philistines did. And so when we say, hey, how are you how is fatherhood going? Are you championing your kids? That's the real question. I <laughs> True champions know how to make champions. Dang. And I think, you know, we need to learn how to champion young people. I'm so proud of, like, my kids. You know, I like to mess with them. 
But I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you guys are all right. You guys are cool. They're like, no, we are cool. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> you know, but I always want to yeah. champion the next generation. I don't yeah. want to be a guy who comes back and say, man, what is this generation turning into? Oh, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You guys have cool clothes. I like it. All right, the music's yeah. different, cool, but hey, that's good. How are you guys doing? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, dad, I want to do this. Like, oh, that's cool, do it. I always want to assist the champion. You might be the next one. Yeah. You might, and I'd much rather be like King Saul. Do you want my armor? It doesn't fit? Are you sure you still want to go? Mm. You have my blessings. And when, you, when you're done, you can have my goods. Yeah. I want to be the man who knows how to see the champion in you. I want to know how to reward you like a champion and talk to you like a champion. That's good, bro. Because you know what? That's a, that's, that's a cool thing that you bring up because even King saw, he's seen in a, in a negative light a lot, you know, yes. in the story, you know, oh, that's but, a whole nother world. Yeah. That's yes. a whole nother story. But I love how you brought that up because it's so true. You know what I mean? Like he, he could have easily been like, bro, put the armor on. Or he could have been like a kid. Really? Yeah. Like, Anybody come on. Sees, he's like, he's young. David, come on, David. Who, who's is this your brother? You're not even enlisted in the army, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's, even have your parentals on your your mom and dad's signature. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, or he could have been like the armor doesn't fit, bro. Just go out, get back in your chariot, go home. Like just call it a day. He could have easily done that, but you know what? Like, and a lot of times people say like, no, no, it's because King Saul was scared. It's because this. But regardless, regardless of all those different factors, at the end of the day. That's true. He championed David. He championed. And that's, and I think I take that value. I have a value champion in my life. Once again, I don't need, I don't need to be champion. I don't need to do, but I will say this. I have been champion. I've been championed yeah. by my dad. I've been championed by, I'm still getting championed by my mom. My mom values me. And the way you do, the way you champion somebody is that you see the value in them. And so I do that to my wife. I said, dang, I'm like, babe, you're killing it today. And she's like, oh, what am I killing? And she wants specifics. <laughs> I'm like, like, man, the way you the way you did this, the way you made the bread, the way you I'm like, girl, you are just like <laughs> sweet. Yeah. And she's like, tell me more. And I'm like, okay. And then and I just like, if yeah. I can't say more, I'm not it, I'm not naturally doing it. Yeah. I go back to the rehearsing and and I go back and say, Am I a champion? Let me see if I can do it. I don't have a lot of words. Yeah. I don't have, I'm not good at this. I need to learn how to do this. So I started listening to podcasts. I started reading books. I started doing this. I started yeah. saying, okay, cool. I now have better vocabulary on championing people. Yeah. And I, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be the spotlight anymore. I used to when I was younger. Yeah. Isn't Even it, though I'm still young it, right now, but, yeah. but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need that. I don't, I don't need isn't that all eyes on yeah, me anymore. Isn't that interesting? You know what? You got the wrong guy. Yeah. This do gossip. That's so interesting that you say that, man, because it's so true. I think that as, as you know, and I, I know that time does have to also be uh, the factor in a lot of people's lives, you know, and even through this podcast, you know, through this message today, like, it's not that we want to force this down people. We just want people to, yeah, shine some perspective and for you to just question, you mm -hmm. know, for you to really question, like, where are you in your life? You know, where are you? Are you, are you Goliathing it, you know? You know, are you listening to everything that's only Goliathing you or are you offering? Because I even it's interesting because I made a video and I didn't release it. I I, I was like, you know what? I'm, I want to remake it because <laughs> uh, I was just out of the gym. I was in the gym and then, uh, you know, I don't know if you ever have. I'm sure you have those moments, too, man, where you just a thought begins to come to you, you know, and and I began to I think it's somebody was in my heart. You know, somebody was really I had a conversation with someone and um, they're a pretty successful business owner. You know, they, they're they they're pretty successful. Um, you know, they got some great things going on, great family and everything. And they started to open up with me about certain things, you know, and I was like very grateful, you know, that they were sharing with me. And I just listened. I just listened. And, you know, I, you know, I just heard them out. And even afterwards, they're like, man, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for just thank you for just listening to me. You know, thank you. I was like, yeah, of course, man. Anytime. So I started to really think and I was like, man, um, sometimes we we get it wrong in being surrounded with the right people. You know, a lot of times when we say surround yourself with like minded people, a lot of times we think that we have to surround ourselves only with people that are in our class. Right. 
we think that we only have to surround ourselves with people that, you know, if we're million dollar earners, we got to go, you know, because that's what society teaches. That's yeah. what culture teaches. Like, you know, that the whole sayings like, you know, hang around five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth, yeah. you know, things like that, which is in, in, a, in a big sense, it's true. But a lot of times in our own personal lives, you know, we can't just hang around with people in our class because a lot of times what that does is that it categorizes what we share and what we don't share. You know, for example, if you're a successful business owner and all you do is hang out with successful business owners, well, you're going to be afraid to, you know, show vulnerability because you're not going to want to be vulnerable. You're not going to want to say, man, my business is struggling, guys, because a lot of the people in that class, they might be like, Haha, I knew it. And a lot, it's sad, but a lot of times the people we surround ourselves with, in reality, they just they're 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 envious or they're jealous or they're they're just waiting for a fall. They're just waiting for you to make a mistake because you know we we want to be so much part of these clubs. We want to be so much part with these groups. You know, we begin to buy the same toys as them. We begin to do all these different things, and we forget that man being surrounded with like minded people isn't just being surrounded with people in your class. It's being surrounded with how is it that you want to father people? How is it that you want to? I'm sorry. How is it that you want to father your children? Surround yourself with good dads. Yeah. How is it that you want to be in your marriage? Surround yourself not just with married people, but with good marriages. Yeah. How do you want to? You know, you want to be a man of God. How are you surrounding yourself, regardless of what their career is, regardless of what their job is? You know, and I think that's what's so beautiful about Christian community mm -hmm. is because you can get a little bit of everything and they are able, if you're open, they are able to champion those things in you, man. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of things you said there, there's a lot to unpack there. And I think it's so true because... <sighs> You know, every everyone's so different with their time. Yeah. Everybody's social lives. And I was just, just talking this with my mom yesterday. It's funny. But um and we were talking about ever since the pandemic, society has changed in such a drastic way. Even church has changed. Everything has changed. You know, and I think some people want to be with people, some people don't want to be with people, some people yeah. prefer to be with their dog, like me. Like <laughs> I love my puppy and birdie and you know, and I just like, you know, there's just some people that just everybody's just Society has really changed. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, like all societies before us, everything requires effort. That's what the Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 4. And it talks about like, make every effort to strive for unity. Yeah. Unity does not happen naturally. You have to make an effort. And who you unify yourself with requires effort. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes some of us here are really exhausted and tired, and you need to be around somebody who who is not exhausting. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's just it's it's the, it's the crazy thing. Um, I I'm gonna share something how I live my life. Um, uh, championing young people and anyone is a really huge ordeal in my life. I want to be known for that. Um. But I haven't always thought like that. I traveled a lot. I, I've experienced wonderful things. Um, but there is a time, I wasn't even there at this message, but there was this man named Lauren Cunningham. He was the founder of uh, Youth with a Mission. It's a huge organization I should work for. But um, some staff got to hear this guy speak, and I've heard him spoke before, and he, was, he played a large role in you know, my life. But he said something at this event, and they brought it back to me, and this is what I heard. So this is secondhand information. There comes a time in your life where you have to stop surfing the big wave. But that doesn't mean that's the end of the story. It just means that your position is no longer on the surfboard. So you're no longer surfing the big wave. You can still surf the, the waves. You can still surf them. But the the, the next big position for you will come to a point where you get on the boat and you get on the jet ski and it's, you have to learn how to throw the rope to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I know how to ride this. I know how to throw you in. Dang. So when will you get on the jet ski and when will you throw the rope to the next generation? 
Mm. And I ask myself, am I throwing the rope? And am I, am I, do I know how to swing this kid into this wave to give him the best experience of his life? Because I know how to do it. Mm. And there's been days where I said, man, what's up, dude? Like, man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I know what you could do. And it feels so good to be able to say that to somebody who needs to hear that. Mm-hmm. And I do that with my kids. I do that with my, my friends. Man, you can do it. No, you totally, you got, you totally got this. Yeah. You got all the resources. Don't give up. If you go down, this is what happens if you go down. So like somebody who knows how to been, who's been in a massive, I've been in some really big waves crashes and they have to teach you how to go in with the road. You, it's not like we're like, you're at the shore. Cause when you're in a big, like eight footer, 12 footers, you have to know how to tumble in it. So when someone coaches you through that, like, okay, it's going to feel like your limbs are going to go everywhere, but whatever you do, you make sure you know where that leash is at. Okay. That's where the one thing, don't worry about your body. Don't worry about the tumbling. Whatever, out of your control to keep the leash. Don't yeah. lose the leash. And that's the main thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing, so that you don't lose everything. Because the moment you do, you won't come back up. Yeah. And so I just, because that's, that's, when I, my, my ghost leaves my body, I want to be known for that. <laughs> yeah. Man. I want to be known as the man who, who was able to get into jet ski. Yeah. But then he said, then there comes a time you got to get off the jet ski and you got to get in the boat. And then you got to teach the guy who's on the jet ski. Like you got to get in, you got to position him and coordinate yeah. him. I want to do that. I want to just keep yeah. advancing my coaching yeah. by supporting. I want to, everything that comes out of my tongue, my body, everything screams, I will support you. I'll support you. Yeah. I'll support you. But I'll always first say no to you. No. And then see if you really want it, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. No, that's 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 really awesome, bro. I love that. I love that, man. And that's that's one of the things that I'm really trying to like you say, man, it's 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 not a lot of things right now in my season, they really aren't natural. You know, they really aren't, you know, and That's great. I've had to. Yeah, man, you're in a place of learning. Yeah. And it's it really it really is, man. And there's moments where I'm like, but, you know, like you said, I've I've come to a realization where and I think I've shared that with you where I'm like, you know what? I I am a dad. You know, I am a dad. I am a husband. That's what I am. You know, it's not something that I'm in. That's who I am. That's wonderful. And it's such beautiful when you transition those words because a lot of times, like, yeah, like, oh, I have kids. Yeah, I have kids. Yeah, I'm I'm in a marriage. I have a wife. But it's so different when you're actually a husband. Yeah. Big difference. And you're actually a father. And you're a fun one. Yeah. And you're not a boring one. It's like, hey, look go to the beach. Yeah. Hey, look go here. Look go there. Like, hey, let's go explore. Yeah. Now, now. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. It. And I, I think I shared that with you. Was it with you? Or yeah. Was it with I you? Was I think awesome. I, I was like, let's go. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. I was like, man, when we, I went to, we went to the beach. I think it was as a family. It was a Sunday. It yeah, was that Sunday after was, service. I think it was yeah, a, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. We're like, you know what? Let's take them to the, let's take them to the beach. My wife really wanted to go to San Clemente, right? Huh. We wanted to go. She wanted to check it out. And so, yeah, we went and. That's a cool beach. It, it, it is, man. And it was Honestly, man, like I hadn't felt like that in so long. That's I cool. felt so present. Yeah. I felt so present there. I felt so present watching my kids tumble in the waves. You know, my son Ezra, man, he's like, he's a shark, dude. He's just, he <laughs> loves being in the water. That's like, cool. I mean, the other kids will be out, they'll be in the sand and he'll just be in the water. Yeah. And I just, that's the best. And I was just watching my wife, I was watching my little one and, and I'm just like, God, like, it was such a small moment, but it was such a huge moment for me because for so long, man, I've always been just drained with anxiety, drained with even depression, drained with all these worries. And that day, I'm just like, man, like, this is beautiful. You know, and I remember afterwards, uh, you know, we're like, 
oh yeah, let's get some food, you know. And there was some pizza and oh, let's go. I saw pizza a, and beach is like the best. Yeah, and then I saw a grass area. There was a grass area oh, right and there. It's even better when it's and outdoor. I'm like, let's. I'm like, nah, let's. She's like, where do you want to eat? Do you want to eat it here? I'm like, no, oh, there's a grass area over <laughs> yeah. there. Like, let's take it over there. And she's like, oh, okay. It's all and out of bounds. Yeah, like I was like, dude, this is dope. And I remember just sitting there with my son, and just uh, you know ants got on us and everything yeah. but it was it was such a cool moment man yeah. and, and just to be there and it and it felt free it felt free it That's felt great. it felt like man like you know what like i wasn't thinking about my next move i wasn't thinking mm. about what's next i wasn't thinking about what to post i wasn't mm. thinking about you know and there's nothing wrong with that guys no, no. i don't want to say like no 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 like i i love creating but memories. there's a time I for love, everything but there's a time and and that time was just like be present present yeah. be present man and um that's great and i just that's one of the things i want to really champion that's one of my goals is i want to everything that i wasn't able to do you know even as a kid like i want to champion that in my kids yeah that's called I, from what it sounds like it sounds like it's called uh quality time yeah you know, I love quality time. Yeah. I had some quality time with my mom and ah, oh, so good. She filled up my bucket. I'm like, oh mom, this is this is all I want. Yeah. My parents gave me quality time and I just love it. You know, and okay. I think that's great. I think it's just a matter of knowing what your love language is, knowing those things and it yeah. just going after that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's, 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 all this is so good. And <laughs> yeah, you know, man, I love this. And There's I so love the conversation. To, uh, yeah. I feel like we can like keep going a stack bro. and a stack and, you know, yeah. but I There's hope this so was much. good. No, I, I, this was, bro. I really think, I know that this is going to, I know this is going to speak to someone. And, and I, I've never, I, I've always have to remind myself that our vision is to have real authentic conversations. Yeah. You I'll know, be, whoever listens to it, Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really do appreciate it. Do you taking your time to and whoever doesn't doesn't, you know what I mean? Like there's there's people that, you know, want to follow that Goliath. They yeah. want to file. They want to they want to champion their Goliath life. And, 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 and you know what? All I can say, this is all I can say is that for a long time, when I look back and I heard that message, there was so much reflection in my life that I'm like, bro, George, you've been. You, you love the idea of the heart of David. You've loved the idea of David. But like George, in reality, you've for so long in so many seasons of your life, you've tried to just pursue a Goliath lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, you've wanted to do this and you've wanted to be this and you've wanted to be that, that you've missed out on those David moments. Yeah. Because and just to kind of close with this and even I, I want you to share something, but, he, you know, David wouldn't have been David if he wouldn't have taken in those moments in the shepherd field. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so many times um, being a shepherd, which is the lowest class in that society, the worst job, like the low, like it's not a really respectable. You're smelly. You're smelling. Stinky. You have sheep. Sheep. Nothing. Yeah, and then most of the time there are kids doing that. So like, it's not really, you know, it's not really looked or well respected, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to have dignity. And we knew that that kid had dignity, yeah. you know? So yeah, I'm all for that. That's a yeah. good, that's a good perspective. Yeah. You so know? don't be afraid. No. Don't, be, don't be afraid of the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid, man. Don't be afraid of your shepherd season. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things that, I have had to come to man and I think I've had a lot of shepherd seasons in my life and um and I think that it's because well, I think one of the reasons why I've had so many of those seasons a lot of it is because you know what um God continues to remind me that I'm not done that's right you know I'm not done with you I I, I sometimes have to take you back to the shepherd fields because I need to remind you that the Lord is your shepherd and humble sees humble yeah so when you go on in your life and I go on in my life and I see somebody humbling themselves, but nobody to recognize it, I can recognize yeah. it. I say, I see you. I got you. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm following you. And they're like, no, no, I'm following you. There's like this humility. Yeah. And I think there's something very powerful behind that. Yeah. You know, it open it gives you another lens for you yeah. to understand how to see people. Yeah. You know, shepherding, being a shepherd gives you the lens of knowing where what it's like to come from 
the bottom. Yeah. And he doesn't he doesn't give you the Goliath lens. Like, I came from the, the, the front of the bottom up. It doesn't do that. Yeah. It's like it never leaves you. Yeah. Those things are real. That was reality. And I understood what was going on. I accepted those things. But now look where I got. The Lord has brought me yeah. here. And he can do it for you. He It passes on. Yeah. And yeah, man. Love it, bro. Yeah, love it's crazy. It. Yeah, dude, man. There's, there's so much good <laughs> stuff, man. I even encourage you. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll even put the link right there if you want to go and listen to that full message from that day. Um, just so you can get more context, a little bit more perspective about the message. But but I think what we touched on today, man, it was, that was awesome. It was awesome, man. Yeah. And and um, but I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys. Thank you, Aaron, man. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Aaron, for coming out, man, taking time of, out of your day to oh, come course, and converse, bro. And and uh, we're drinking some delicious coffee, too, bro. You know, like we're right here. Uh, <laughs> I uh, wanted to do a little plug in too. I'll do a little plug in real quick. My we just started a uh, a mobile coffee cart business. Uh, my wife and I, uh, mainly my wife, <laughs> mainly my wife, but I'm right there. I'm her helper, uh, you know. And uh, she just started it. It's called Sweet Bliss. I'm gonna put the link right there too. Uh, we do mobile coffee cart, you know. So basically, um, we do pop ups, all that good stuff, but. Uh, our main focus is we want to go, go into wedding venues, you know, so if you have a wedding coming up, a quinceanera coming up, a sweet 16 coming up, family gathering, even birthday parties, you know, whatever it is, man, this will be a great, 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 great touch, a great touch for that party, for that event. Even if you're a warehouse manager, you want to do something, an employee appreciation. If you're in real estate, even, and you say you're going to have an open house, man, this is a great touch for people to remember you that that event by man. What better than to provide some some uh, iced uh, lattes, some hot lattes right there. And, uh, you know, that would be the perfect touch for your event. So I'm going to put the uh, information right there. Hit us up if you're interested, man. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but today's conversation, man, was amazing, man. I hope you guys got something from it. I know I did. And uh, don't forget, don't forget to be real. Don't forget. And, and being real, we just kind of touch on this. Being real in today's age is is very different. You know, a lot of times we hear, hey, you got to be real. But a lot of times being real doesn't necessarily mean equal for you to stay the same. I hear that a lot. You know, well, this is who I am. I'm being real. Well, if being real is messing up your marriage, is is that really being real? I, I believe being real is when you're willing to be authentic, when you're willing to not just be blunt, but you're willing to be authentic with yourself. When you're willing to say, man, you know what? This is happening. This is destroying my life. This is destroying my marriage. This is destroying my children. This is destroying everything around me. And you start to have conversations. When you be real, when you start being authentic and you start conversating with the right people around you, trust me, believe me, things can change. It's not about just being real just for the sake of saying, yo, I'm real. Because sometimes that real can be very, really destructive. You know, take it from me that for years I was like, you know what, this is me. This is who I am. I guess this is me. This I'm never going to change. But you know what? It was it was being destructive. It was being toxic. Name it, whatever. It was not leading me towards a good path. But you know what? I had to get authentic and I had to start having conversations with real people. So I hope this encourages you guys, man. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you guys so much for all, everyone that tunes in. Send this to somebody that needs to hear this, that you feel will benefit from this. Thank you guys so much for the likes, for the shares, for everything, man. Thank you guys. Once again, this was Offbeat Podcast. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. Oh, really?